This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? It's been a, a few, hasn't it? <laughs> it has been a few, indeed. Yes, we, <laughs> we decided to take a hiatus because there was really nothing to talk about. We're talking about. <laughs> and then we actually, we, we, we tried last week. We were honestly we, we did, tried. We really did. Um, yeah, we really, we were really We going did. to do a podcast. We were all set to do it. And uh, to say there were technical difficulties would be a minor misnomer because either mm. Jared couldn't hear me or I couldn't hear Jared. And then to boot it entirely into the stratosphere was my computer didn't record any of the audio. So... Yeah. So, yeah, it was a whitewash last week. An absolute get out of town. In no way. Don't worry about it. Things like, yeah, well, the good news is that it actually convinced Jared that he needed to download uh, OBS to try and have a go at it himself. <laughs> mm, which was which was good. Like, it was a good experience to, to try and set it up. And I know now what Chris is faced with every single time he records. Yeah, he didn't believe me. The easy I don't think. <laughs> it, uh, no, no, it's not so much I didn't believe you. Sometimes I need to experience things so a I can maybe try to work out what's going on. And <laughs> the announcer comes in and goes, "He didn't." <laughs> <laughs> um, and <laughs> the thing that's uh, frustrating about OBS and Streamlabs as well, because I actually downloaded Streamlabs to try, it is the audio. The audio in this product is really, really hard to understand. Unless someone could throw me a OBS audio for dummies guide that lets me understand what each of the settings mean, uh, it's it really is the most confusing part of the product. The setting up scenes is actually really yeah. intuitive. Like yeah. that, that makes a lot of sense. The video aspects of it is it's great, but the audio, it is it is really frustrating to try and get right. So here's what I want to throw out there to any of you else that uh, have experience with OBS, because I'm kind of convinced it's not entirely OBS's fault that it's probably how I also have my own computer audio set. Uh, mm. And the, the issue that is driving me mental is the idea that I would like to use my headphones to monitor what is actually being put out. And if I can't hear it in the headphones, then that would mean that it's not being put out. So... If any of you know <laughs> a deeper uh, understanding of OBS working with your computer's audio, uh, drop us a note. Uh, you can do it in the YouTube comments or you can contact us on Twitter. Uh, it'd be really handy to be able to actually have a conversation because the thing is, is when I go to the OBS forums, um, there's a bazillion different answers for it. And like, I've tried doing the settings that people have had and had no luck. And then I try a different person settings and they work, but both of them are seemingly correct for whoever uh, had their problem solved. So that's, that's where we're kind yeah. of at with that. Yeah. It's the, the thing I think that makes audio really hard on both OBS and Streamlabs is that every single computer is different <laughs> and there's no, there's no one size fit all. It's like, it could be that someone's using a different like virtual uh, audio card in their computer. It could be a real tech versus, you know, some other um, video card, media tech or whatever. So how you set it up for one person's computer and hardware will be different for somebody else's. And it's probably why I haven't been able to find a really good comprehensive getting started guide for, yeah. for the products. Yeah. Unless I'm looking in the wrong place. And if I am, please do send me in the right place. And, and Chris as well. Yep. Because like Chris has got it set up now where it's pretty much working well, except for a few, like that last 10% that you really <laughs> want to get right. But it's like really, really hard to get right because you don't know what you need to set to get it to be right. That's sort of where he's up to at the moment. So that's where we need the help. So if there's any um, friends of the show out there who want to actually, you know, give us a hand, then reach out. And say good day. In other news, in case anybody was actually wondering, you may know that I had been uh, working for Disneyland. Well, yes, I'm one of the twenty-eight thousand people that no longer has a job at Disneyland. <laughs> twenty-eight thousand is a ridiculous amount of people. It was kind of a large it? cut. Is, yeah, yeah, and it was a big cut. 
Yes, it's really crappy news, but uh, it is. I guess the only, I guess the only, the only, <laughs> not even positive part of it, but it's like you're not alone. So there's a large <laughs> network of people out there that are sort of feeling the same things. Often, you know, when you get made redundant or you know fired or you know, certainly in this case, just furloughed. I think it was a that's the new word for 2020 it's furloughed yeah um, there's there's a word i never knew before <laughs> yeah i know everyone's unfortunately everybody knows what furlough means now <laughs> kind of similar to how i never knew what zoom was before 2020 <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah you probably your life is probably no richer for knowing what zoom is <laughs> let's be serious <laughs> but it's like, yeah it's like the, what, uh, what else can what else can 20, 2020 take a dump on oh yeah see uh movie theaters yeah those are taking a dump uh <laughs> yeah uh, well, theme parks over there, I'd imagine, are still yep. the same. Yeah. Yep. Uh, tourist industry um, in general, that's toast. Uh, airline yeah, industry tanks. is like about to be majorly hurting. It's, yeah. yeah. What a great year. Basically on the ropes. Yeah. It's, <laughs> everything is on the ropes, basically. It's being knocked around for eight rounds. Um, you know, the funny thing about the theme parks here is they're open here in Australia with a COVID safe plan. Um, and uh, which is what the government's calling, you know, limited access, you know, capped numbers, social distancing, hand sanitizers everywhere. But the, the thing that boggles my mind is that they've had since March to go and do maintenance on the park and get everything working. So they're up and running now. And lo and behold, two of the major attractions are down <laughs> for maintenance. It's like, hang on. Way to time it, folks. Like, <laughs> so... You had literally six months of like get your stuff worked out, and now two of the key attractions that are there. I mean, there's a hypercoaster there which is working. All the newer attractions are working, but all the older ones, like I think um, the Scooby Doo Spooky Coaster, which is one of those Mad Mouse indoor roller coasters, um, that's out. And there's uh, a couple of other ones there as well, like Arkham Asylum, which is the inverted. Um, intimate roller coaster they have there with uh, VR goggles on. Yeah, that's down as well. And these these are things that I was th seriously considering I, going yesterday um, to a theme park and just spending the day there. But if if the attractions aren't working, like if if not every single attraction is working, I'm sorry, you, I'm not going. Like I'm I don't get an opportunity to go to a theme park that often. Yeah. So yeah, I want everything to be working. I honestly don't know. I mean, I know that as far as Disney is concerned, they're open in Florida, um, as is Universal. I don't know throughout the country how many other theme parks are actually open. Um, I mean, we've got a, a lot of theme parks throughout the country. Yeah, you got Six Flags and all that over there. Six with Flags, the Cedar Fair. Rides. Um, those are yeah. the, the other two big companies. Uh, but here mm. in California, none of them are open. So yeah, that's right. that. Um, mm. Sliding that into the realm of pinball, I know that's what you all show up here for right and we actually have we, stuff we to do talk tangents about today. well yeah, <laughs> we, we just preloaded our tangents up front i think we we do today. we do but yeah. uh there's where with pinball it's actually they're seeing it on a rise we're going to get into that a little bit later uh with a certain new machine that uh recently came out from jersey jack pinball and mm. uh i saw a news report uh basically stating that Jersey Jack, Stern, their pinball sales are, they're backlogged now. Yes. Uh, yeah. So at least somebody's happy about all of this. Somebody's winning. The, somebody's the, winning. Unfortunately, the operators aren't because nobody can go to the places Venues. that actually have pinball because, you know, sweaty palms all over them would have to be cleaned between every single play. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. <laughs> yeah. Netherworld work around it differently. They just have sanitizing hand pumps at every pinball machine. And, you know, the expectation is that you, you do a little um, pump and play. Um, <laughs> so you, you know, put the hand sanitizer on and then you, you know, let it dry and then you start playing the game. And it seems to be working all right. You know, I yeah. mean, sure, when people get drunk, they're probably not going to do it. Let's be honest, <laughs> but, you know, um, I think that for the most part, people kind of get that that's the new normal now. Um, and you kind of just have to use it. But, you know, there's one thing to note that, you know, you can't really, really use hand sanitizer twice before you then have to wash your hands properly. So you can't just go for 13 machine bonanza and just keep pumping between machines because it, 
it stops working. And also your nails strip off as well. I don't know if you've seen any news about that. But no, I hand haven't. Sanitizer, yeah, if you use hand sanitizer too much, it basically makes you lay, your nails lift, your fingernails lift off. And there's some people that you know live around here. Like our next door neighbor had that problem. She had to be on like special dermatitis cream to actually settle her hands down because she was using hand sanitizer that much. Well, so yeah, it's don't don't special? overuse that stuff. Yeah, don't don't overuse it too much. Like be just be be sensible about it. All right, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's uh, well, let's move on to the the obvious news. As if yeah. you've been living under a rock, uh, volume six of the William Spinball from Zen dropping on the twentieth of October. So by the time you're listening to this, it's either just about to drop or already has those three tables. Bing, in case you forgot, Funhouse, yay, uh, Doctor Dude. And Space Station. Yes. So they're finally going to be coming. Getting out. Getting out. Um, we still have not seen the finished product ourselves, even though we were beta. Nope. So they're cutting it to the wire. Um, so we'll yeah, be it's... just as uh, just as surprised as you to see what the uh, the finished product actually looks like. Um, I'm excited to see how they manage to make function the. Uh, score displays is basically what I'm most keen to see. Yeah, they've had a lot of time to refine them, and I know it's been challenging for them to get them right. Um, but the good news is that you know that paves the way, doesn't it, for all the alphanumerics now that they've that got it the right. Yeah, so that's good news. That is good news. So go on out there, quit uh, quit complaining, and uh, plop down your. I imagine it's ten bucks for the uh, three Something tables. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. About ten, and I keep on saying, Funhouse and Doctor Dude alone are worth it. And Space Station, I'm not a fan of tables that don't have flipper inlays. The Italian bottom, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm, it's going to take some getting warmed up for me to to enjoy Space Station. But uh, the other two, it's fun once you. It, it's it's it really is a fun game once you get into it. Like yeah. it's it's a classic system eleven or system nine style game. System nine really. Um but yeah, it's it's fun. It just let the, the ball is wild down the bottom. It's definitely wild, but yeah. It'll grow on you. And then it'll be very interesting to see if uh Zen has any other tricks up their sleeves before the new year, or if they too have just gone, you know what? Twenty twenty. Screw you. <laughs> twenty twenty gives you plenty. That's what they like to say down here. <laughs> Except in the case of pinball, which gives you nothing. Except for promised virtual pinball tables, Chris. What are you talking about? What yeah, promised oh, sorry, virtual pinball tables? Pro, pro, sorry, promised physical pinball tables. Oh! I'm like, I didn't hear anything about virtual pinball. <laughs> yeah, be... sorry. Physical, virtual pinball tables. There's too many words. You're, you're right? Too many words, and I just realized I haven't just, had a coffee this morning. It's probably just... half the reason. <laughs> Yeah. I just call them virtual cabs. Um, speaking of, probably... we have a new player on the market. So if you've been keeping track of uh, the cabs that are going to be out supposedly this holiday season, you've got Toy Shock uh, once again coming out with basically their uh, version 1.2 of what they came out with uh, last Christmas. So it's the 12 and one machine with the uh, 12 Gottlieb tables on it. Um, yeah. So that's number one. Number two, you've uh, got the one-up arcade machines. And we're going to mm. talk about something that we've all known that has been making waves, and me and Jared think we have a different t take on that. But for the for mm. right now, the one-up three-quarter machine. And then you've got a new player by the name of Well Played Arcade. They've got a table coming out, or a machine coming out, that's going to have Zacharia machines on it. Mm. And then you've got At Games, who is coming out with Legends Pinball, but we still have not seen so much as even a photo <laughs> no. of what that is. It's basically just words at yeah, the moment. Just, just words at one. the moment. Um, and uh, Very promising words. Yes. Like, it sounds like it's going to be great, but I, I need to see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the only yeah. thing that we can actually base anything off of is how they've been making function their uh, the Legends Ultimate 
cab and their mm-hmm. Legends Gamer, which is the basically the uh, controller that sits on your lap. Yeah. Um, that has everything. But anyway, like I said, the new player to that is this well-played arcade. And what they've shown is that they signed licensing agreement with Magic Pixel for the Zacharia tables. They're going to have 27 tables, which if I'm guessing correctly, that would be all of the solid state tables that are in the game. Uh, Cause there's exactly yes, 27 of those. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be running off the Android platform. Yes. Because it sounds like that with their particular product, you can download it. They've got DLC capability. Um, so that means that you could probably download all the other ones onto the cabinet as well, which means that if my calculations are correct, that's something to the order of 60 or 70 tables that they've done now. Yeah, something like of that nature. Yeah. Probably thereabouts, which would then put that cabinet as the highest number of tables offered for any digital cabinet that you can get on the market, which is impressive in its own right. Yeah, and it's, it's got... Uh... It's got USB ports and stuff on the front of it. We'll we'll show you a picture in a moment. Mm. Um, mm. The other thing, though, that's happening over with the At Games Legends Pinball is now I didn't realize this. They had signed uh, uh, At Games had signed a licensing agreement with uh, Taito last January uh, to be able to bring yeah. over to the cab uh, classic Taito games. But they just announced uh, about a month ago, <laughs> basically right after our last podcast, um, yeah. they they announced that they had also signed an agreement to make virtual pinball games based mm. off of Taito games. Uh, they didn't list how many. They didn't list who was going to be making those, although if we had to guess... It would only make sense that, uh, I mean, who's the only other player in the market that makes pinball, even though it's they haven't done so Farsight's in a pinball. while? Hmm. Yeah. Farsight? <laughs> um, mm. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to point out something, and this was within their press release uh, regarding this. These are the ones that they specifically mentioned, and because they said that they think that these fit a pinball theme really well. So see what you think. They rattled off. Arkanoid, Bubble Bobble, Elevator Action, Chack and Pop, Darius, Frontline, Operation Wolf, Rainbow Islands, uh, Rastin Saga, Space Invaders, Legend of Cage, and Zookeeper. Some of those I'm familiar with. Some of them I've never heard of before. Yeah. So the big question is, Assuming that it is Farsight, go mm-hmm. with us here on this. Assuming it is Farsight, do we honestly believe that Farsight is making brand new designed playfields? Because that's, uh, that's 12 titles right there that I just rattled off. So 12 brand new custom designed tables with all their own set of rules and light show, and coding, and DMD, and all that action? Or do we think they're going to do a Masters of Time and just reskin some Williams tables? That way they can skirt around the licensing issue, but they've already got things programmed and dialed in, and all you're doing is just slapping on some new art and changing out the toys. Well, I think that it's obvious that's what they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, look, for what it is, Masters of Time is an interesting take on the Doctor Who table, but it's it's not good. <laughs> like, it's, it's not a great table. So I think it's going to be interesting to see whether they do go down the path of um, doing reskins that's probably going to be a yes because they don't have pinball table designers on because it allows them to reuse assets that they've already are indeed and spent time with they already know the physics yes. of the tables 
uh, so all you're really doing is, like I said, slapping on a new coat of paint, changing out a toy or two so that you uh, avoid licensing issues on that front, and yeah. then altering the rules a little bit, but you can base most of them, which is what Masters of Time did, base most of them off of what the original was uh, and get away with it. Then you're you're safe. As long as I don't have the moaning angels in it, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's just my only memory of that table because wasn't the there a angel. um wasn't there a brazilian company that did exactly that with i don't know if it was with williams tables or with gottlieb tables where they uh reskinned it retitled it but it was through and through guts and all the other table <laughs> yeah it was yeah that's right there's play not playco or galico or something like that I can't. I can't quite remember. Yes, they absolutely did that in Spain. Oh, um, it was Spain, not they, Brazil. Like, okay, I think it's Spain. Yeah, definitely. Because um, there's, I think there's even some. There's like a Gottlieb table um, that is like I think it's Mars God of War, but then they've done another one to. I think it's called. Oh, it's some medieval theme thing. I'd like to say Excalibur, but I don't think it is. Um, and I was nearly going to pick it up as one of the tables I'm going to be doing up because it's really rare. Um, but it just didn't appeal to me. Like it wasn't a really good layout to start with that they copied. So, <laughs> but you know, I don't think that they, that Farsight are going to be doing any Belly Williams tables because I think if they did that, Zen and scientific games would just come down on them like a, a ton of, you know what? Um, so you think, think they're going to actually going to... reskin Gottlieb tables? Yeah, they're going to be reskinning Gottlieb's for sure because the target market that they're going for on this At Games cabinet is, I don't think it's the hardcore player. And I think that their Gottlieb layouts, they will be able to get away with really easily reskinning those because they're not complex. But considering that they're of... already going to have all 22 Gottlieb, so basically it's everything but the two Alvin G's that uh, they did prior, um, those have already been... Well, they haven't been confirmed, but the if you go to the Ad Games website, they say they have 22 licensed tables. There's exactly 22 tables that Varsite has access to that aren't Stern, and those are the Gottliebs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's going to be part of their... I don't know. We, we still haven't figured out if it's actually going to be loaded onto the machine or is it going to be streaming, uh, how that's going to be functioning. But if you already are playing every single Gottlieb that way... Wouldn't it be painfully obvious for just a reskin to have Taito stuff on it and go, well, yeah, I've already played this. I mean, essentially, I think... it, you're like basically doing El Dorado City of Gold with, what well, I mean, okay, fine, Gottlieb does have a history of doing that, don't they? <laughs> they do, yeah. In fact, most pinball manufacturers leading up to the 50s, 60s, and 70s did that all the time. Like they turned a one player play field to a two player play field to a four player play field, you know, and just changed the art. Like that's how they they made money back then. So, you know, it's, it's pretty common. Um, and the thing is that, you know, Farsight did make some changes to, um, albeit probably cosmetic in a large respect, to things like the time expander on Masters in Time. They turned it into a TARDIS. Well, because um, that's the toy and... that they absolutely had to alter include to it well they but oh. i mean they had to alter it to avoid licensing issues yeah absolutely it was like yeah there's no way they could get around that um so um from that perspective i think what they do is they keep the overall layout so probably the main playboard layout they would keep but then ramps and things is what they'd probably change so they'd probably change entry and exit points for ramps and they probably like vary the play field like that um, and it's pretty, it's pretty easy enough to do. You just basically move one ramp entry to another position and then change the guts that was around it. And, you know, then re railroad all the shots and you're fine. Right. So, you know, they, it's plausible that they'd be able to make enough variety of the tables to, to do something about it. The thing is that they don't have to worry about like when you retheme your real table, you've got to worry about, you know, seeing seeing the play field and all that sort of stuff they don't need to do that they was whack bits and pieces on it yeah. and just digitally assemble it like like the people who create um you know um, the uh, virtual pin tables 
and the pin name tables. And um, that, they should be able to use all the assets they have to make some pretty interesting tables if they put their mind to it. But if they're just trying to pump it out and meet the licensing requirements of the um, of the contract, then prepare for dullness. So be curious to see what you guys all think. Uh, do you agree with Jared that it's going to be reskins of Gottlieb? Or do you think that uh, they'll dip their toes into <laughs> the dangerous licensing waters and reskin some uh, some Bally and Williams, but because it's a complete reskin, just like Masters of Time, that uh, they're actually able to get away with it? Somehow, I'm pretty I, sure they that's, still that's have what to I'm go. going for. That's what I think is going to happen. Nah. But we'll see. See, they still they still had to go to Scientific Games to get the approval. I'm sure that they did for, for Masters, Masters of, time? of Time. No. Yeah. No. They, they, no. they, oh, really? Are you so. sure? I'm, I'm not. No, I'm not uh, sure. But I don't think they did. I think they could just I'm completely f- claim it as, as their own. It's original. Hmm. And the only reason why I say oh. that is because uh, Data East used to just mirror Williams tables all the time <laughs> mm. <laughs> for their layouts that, and got away with true. it scot free. You know, so long as you've got different yeah, well, back rules. Back in the 80s, though. Well, yeah, but I mean, so long as you've got. 80s and early 90s, like. You know, they, <laughs> It was the Wild West back then with far as licensing goes. It's like, you know, it, it was pretty mad. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see. I don't think that those tables are supposed to be uh, seeing the light of day until 2021, though. Um, yeah. If, if and the I'm... thing is, you'll only... The market that you'll see these on is so narrow. Anyhow, you'll have to have one of the cabinets to play them. And um, that is the other interesting aspect. That, yeah, if you want to play these new things, you're going to have to have an at games platform. Like I said, either the Legends Ultimate Cabinet or the Legends Gamer uh, control pads or this Legends Pinball. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I. It's sort of like it's putting a niche product into a limited exposure market um, with these cabinets. So, mm-hmm. it's going to be... It's an interesting play. I mean, I... I just hope Farsight's getting a like a flat rate for these because <laughs> if, they're, if they're looking at like getting download credits or anything like that on it, I, I don't think they're going to get very much yeah. take up on that. Um, okay, so yeah. as if we haven't talked enough about the uh, arcade one up pinball, mm. a uh, we're going to talk about it some more, right? Um, yeah, we are. <laughs> so too bad. Suck it up, everybody. <laughs> so all of a sudden there was a flurry of posts that popped up on uh, YouTube because GameStop went ahead and threw up pre-orders for Marvel Pinball. At the same time, mm. uh, a Star Wars site put up uh, basically cabinet art and uh, basic imagery of the Star Wars uh, digital pinball cabinet from Zen. So that's two of the three. Mm. Uh, the last one would be the uh, one containing of the Williams tables. Yes. None of them mentioned, again, what tables are going to be on these. But GameStop went ahead and threw up a pre-order for uh, late November. But interestingly enough, they said the pickup order, when you could pick this thing up, wouldn't be until April. Next year, 2021. Next, that's right. So... That yeah. means not ready for the holiday season. So everybody went into kind of a... a it melted tizzy. down, Chris. Did, let's, you, let's be honest. You want to call it a meltdown? The internet okay. broke. The internet <laughs> absolutely broke. All, all of the Facebook uh, groups that I'm members of, like, you know, people saw the listing for uh, the game spot. I always... You have to excuse me because I will probably slip into calling GameStop because I'm not an American. Yeah. And it it, it should be GameStop, but it's Spot. I don't know. Anyhow. No, it's GameStop. So game, it, I was GameStop. Okay, yeah. there you go. I'm very confused. So it's please okay. excuse my, my confusion. Again, it's not um, native to your country. <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's a thing. Anyhow. So um, uh, the GameStop put this thing up and then... Everyone in Facebook said, oh, cool, I'll put a pre-order in. And then people started getting notifications through their pre-orders that, oh, yeah, it's actually going to be shipping in April. Um, And everyone just lost their minds, basically. (laughs) The the forums were lit up with it. As as you say, Chris, there was YouTube videos up on the internet going, oh, what's going on with um, RK 1UP pins? Are we going to miss the holidays? And all this sort of stuff. 
but I did some digging. Okay. And um, I did some digging about um, GameStop in general, and th- this is not an uncommon practice for them, right? They they release things. I was reading the comments and a lot of people uh, on these posts, and they said, oh, look, if you're using GameSpot as a indication of when something's going to be released, it's probably not the best idea <laughs> because, you know, they put up pre-orders for, um, like, Big, you know, there's deluxe arcade sets with a game and lots of plastic stuff that comes along with them, um, you know, promotional items and stuff like that. And there, there's been some cases, and I forget the the name of it in particular, but there's been one instance where people have pre-ordered it through GameSpot. It's actually landed in the stores before the people got their pre-orders. <laughs> so, so as, as a reliable measure. I would discount GameSpot as a reliable indicator of well, when and, something's Well, and, and out. here's the other thing I love that you keep on saying spot, by the way. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> going to be spot for the rest of the show, it, it, deliberately. It's, it's what it is right. for you now. Um, it is. The interesting thing is also that... Because they sell the Arcade 1-Up cabs yes. through their site, but I don't believe they stock them in the stores. I think the only place that stocks them in store is Walmart and Costco. That's and it. Costco, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, and interestingly enough, no other place that sells the one up stuff, which would be you know, Best Buy, Walmart, um, like I said, those are your major retail target, uh, none of them have even pre orders available yet. You go to the no. Arcade One Up website, pre orders still are not uh, linkable there, whereas things like Big Buck Hunter does have pre order uh, tags on the website. Yes. So. It does make you wonder, did GameStop just jump the gun? <laughs> oh, it was a, like my thoughts on the matter is that GameSpot did a strategic move. They wanted pre-order money before Christmas, so they put up this listing to try and sucker people into putting their money down um, and to try and get pre-Christmas sales. It's as simple as that. Like They wanted to be first. They yeah. wanted to get your money first. And I, I would I would vote with my feet and not put any money down with them. That's what I'd be doing. You know, I was thinking about it too, that at first I thought, oh, maybe it makes sense that uh, they would delay it until April. That way they're avoiding the uh, new consoles console from rush. Xbox mm-hmm. and PlayStation. But then I realized, you know how difficult it's going to be to get either of those? They're not going to be available. And people are going to have that much money burning a hole in their pocket. Yeah. So if these are available, it might be, well, we want the kids to have something under the tree. Boom. Boom. They get this. Get, so, get them this. Yeah, so I don't think it's necessarily a, a, a matter of trying to avoid the consoles. Um, I mean, we could be wildly wrong. Everything that I've watched, nobody's willing to speculate. <laughs> no, but, you know, that's our trademark, so we will. <laughs> so we will, we will <laughs> For speculate. Sure. That is what we love we to do. We will speculate. Um, yeah. So my speculation is you will see these things before Christmas. Uh, just I think you're not going to hear anything about it until a couple They're of weeks good before ready. it's ready for pre-order. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I asked them. I asked them, not them as in RK1, but them as a people in the Facebook forum. I asked those folks, look, what happened when Big Buck Hunter was announced through RK1? Did you see like a year-long lead-up to what the product did, what it was going to do? Did you see um, any, um, you know, gameplay or anything before... Arcade One Up was good and ready to get the product ready for sale. And everyone had to admit the answer to that is no. When Arcade One Up are ready, they announce the game, and then you can start pre ordering it. And until that time, there is no roadmap, people. Like, that, you may think there's a roadmap, but you're wrong. There's not until Arcade One Up tell you there's a roadmap for release. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. It's they will they will give you ample notice to pre-order the thing. Like I've seen, like uh, so we'll get to this in a minute. But there's some products that are com- competing in this market. They're not going to be available until November to order or pick up. Yeah. So there's still some time left, folks. Don't lose your mind. Yeah. Keep keep that five hundred or odd buckaroos in your in your pocket, ready to spend. You know, there's no, no need the, to go crazy. The other thing that's being like people keep on saying is, how come we still don't know what tables are on these? How come we don't know? What are they going to be? We did this a little while ago, and I'll just kind of reiterate my guesses based off of the cabinet art. 
Um, the, my only issue with the cabinet art on the Marvel One Up table is the fact that there's an image of Captain Marvel and an image of Black Panther, neither of which has their own dedicated game. Every other mm. image that is on that machine has its own dedicated table that Zen has made. Yes. So that means, this is again what my guess as to what is going to be on this. It's going to offer the best variety, I think, uh, as well as let them come out with another volume of these should this prove successful. But we know for sure Spider-Man's going to be on this. We know for sure Iron Man's going to be on this. We know for sure Captain America is going to be on this. And I believe we know for sure it's either X-Men or Fantastic Four is going to be on this. And I say that because we saw a gameplay video uh, a while ago, but that's what they showed that those tables playing. Um, well, we had to remember too that if it was gameplay video that we saw at CES or at the Arcade Expo, that was running PC hardware. It then. was. So it could very well just been a, a table that they managed to shove inside the cabinet. Let's be serious. Um, so it may actually not be the tables that are offered. But that because... being said, all of those pieces of art are on the cabinet. That's true. So if you can go by that. Uh, going continuing with what is on the cabinet for artwork. Uh, you can pretty much assume that uh, Thor will be a table offered, Wolverine will be a table offered, and X-Men will be a table offered. That leaves three other tables, and it becomes a question of what three tables would those possibly be. I've narrowed it down to being including Fear Itself and Infinity Gauntlet, because those basically wind up being the uh, Avengers Endgame and... Uh, Infinity War, uh, mm. more or less, without having the Avengers title in there. And I'll get into why I don't think that's why we're going to have those tables uh, available. And the other one would be uh, Civil War. And I only state that because it's got both Captain America and Iron Man and Thor featured in it. However, mm. it's also the only table that has Hulk in it uh, of everything that I've listed. And you'll notice Hulk is nowhere near being on the cabinet art. But... Mm. Who is, if you want to have Captain Marvel on there, is she's in one table, which is uh, A-Force. So if yes. there was one table I think that you would swap out to match the cabinet art, it would be swap out Civil War for A-Force. Therefore, there is absolutely no Hulk. Maybe there was a licensing issue uh, mm. being contained within that as one of the titles. And then that leaves you with uh, an interesting selection of tables for a second uh, Marvel pin, which that's where you start having more of the movie based. Because uh, a lot of their artwork, Zen's artwork wound up starting to favor what was happening in the movies. The Avengers tables mm. for sure kind of take that cue. Ant-Man takes that cue. Um, uh, Doctor Strange takes some of those cues. And then you've also got what I think would anchor the table is your Deadpool. Um, Deadpool. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, where's Deadpool and all this? Yeah. Like, you know, so it would be good. Again, nobody's willing to speculate. I am. Those are my speculations of... Uh, <laughs> mm, seems of, legit. I'd probably say that that's a fair assumption to make um, about what's going to go in there. So, it comes to holiday time, and... You're trying to decide, well, what am I going to buy? <laughs> what am I going to put under the kids, at the, the tree for the kids, Chris? What, what is the do? best value for the money? I just wanted to kind of point out something, and, and I did a little bit of a Photoshop here, and I want you guys to take a look at what a real table, so we're going to talk about Guns N' Roses in just a moment, uh, so this is going to be included in this. So that's going to be our image for what a real table looks like, compared to what these other three companies at games, sorry, you didn't produce a picture, uh, <laughs> what they look like. And it looks a little something like this. Nope, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I, gave a sneak, I gave a sneak preview, Jared. All right, that's okay. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just do this. There we go. Hey, look at that. There we are. There we are. Yeah. All right, so obviously... I scaled them all to be looking like they were the same size, but uh, the the three tables are three quarter scale compared to obviously a Guns N' Roses that is is very much real. Um, yeah. 
And it's interesting when you see them all together like that, because you can definitely see the form factor of the Marvel Arcade uh, one-up pinball there. It has the form factor of a real pinball machine. It's got a fake coin door. Uh, the table legs look the same. It's got uh, the feet that are adjustable. Um, the, the back glass looks, you know, fairly legit and appropriate. It's got a decent cabinet depth, and it's got the sunken play field, which if you look right there over at the Guns N' Roses, obviously that has a sunken play field. I mean, you can't have pinball right on the surface of, under the glass. And then you take a look over at... Uh, the well-played machine that's running the Zacharia. And then on the far right, you've got the uh, basically last year's iteration of Toy Shock's uh, 21C cabinet. Yes. And you'll notice both of those have very large bezels. The screen is right there on the surface. They've got a little bit more severe rake, it looks like. But the thing that bugs me the most is look at those legs. It, mm. it, it's like the well-played machine looks like it's a giraffe. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But I said in pre-show that it looked like one of the aliens from uh, War of the Worlds. <laughs> like it just looks really, really tall. And then the and then the toy um, shock one looks like it's got a bulldog stance. Like it's like legs out. Going, yeah. I'm not gonna fall over. I'm not gonna fall over. <laughs> and we know that that's exactly what they were going for there. Like they prioritized stability of that thing over everything else because they knew it was going to be for kids. And they didn't want them toppling it over. Yeah. So it's it's definitely bulldogging for a reason, that one. And then also, if you take a look at... Uh, at first, my initial reaction, just going off memory, I was thinking that the well-played cabinet might be being the exact same product as the Toy Shock. Um, in other words, whoever's building the cabinets is the same person. And then they're just dumping a different software and selling it through a different company. But now that I look at it, it's not so much that because it looks like the Toy Shock one has a deeper... Uh, cabinet, a little bit better scale than this kind of narrow one that uh, Well Played has. But they both have, and it's hard to see in this image uh, on the Well Played one, but they both have the two flipper buttons, obviously for nudging uh, as well as flipping. Yeah. Their plungers are both made of that, just it's a plastic plunger kind of. Uh, the one on the Well Played pinball looks horrible. Yeah. I will say that. Like, if that's what they're shipping, it just looks cheap and nasty. I can see it snapping off within five minutes of play. Like, it just looks cheap and nasty. And you'll notice on the front of the well-played machine, that's where the uh, USB plug-in is uh, mm. for interfacing so there. So you probably assume there's a headphone jack in there probably too, so you can plug headphones in. Listen Maybe. To but what is the one thing that things. the well-played uh, machine is missing there, Jared? Uh, it's missing any sort of displays on the back box. That's right. I don't see a score display anywhere. No. Which means There's the some... score display is going to be right there on the screen. Which And considering this is an Android build of the Zacharia tables, it doesn't surprise me. It's just a straight port, no. as far as I can guess. That's right. So, like, at least with the, um, uh, the Toy Shock one, they devised basically display out yeah. for the, um, the actual um, LCD display. Um, but the yeah the the well played one is just going to be basically you're playing the android build on a cabinet basically yeah. and that's look i don't know i'm on the fence about it <laughs> i i don't know if that's the greatest experience you know so there you go though if you've got uh, and i i purposely put the collector's edition of guns and roses on there because that price point is absurd uh it is yeah. twelve thousand five hundred dollars yeah. folks and they sold Price out the entire Price run in two car. hours. <laughs> two hours, yeah. For the that's the super that's the CE version, isn't it? Yeah, they, they call it CE. Yeah. So yeah, it's, probably it's, for the price of tax on that, you can afford the Marvel pinball. <laughs> um, yeah. For fifty dollars less, you can get more tables with the well played. If you want to play Zacharia tables, but. You've got that really funky form factor. It just doesn't look right to me. Um, yeah. And, I mean, those legs look just cheap. Flimsy. They look flimsy. flimsy. They really do. Uh, and for then 100 bucks less, you've got your uh, Toy Shock, which, again, I can't find any information on 
the the 1.2 version of Toy Shock. Um, everything I looked up, it was all referring to last year's thing. So I don't even know if this price point is going to stick. It they might have increased the price too. They may have done. Uh-huh. I think the only difference between 1.2 and 1.1 is really the upgraded circuit board and I think black hole graphics on the side yeah. of the cabinet, and that's that's it. There's there's not going to be any of the um, DMV tables in there. That's the 2.0 version. Yeah. And that hasn't even really been firmly announced yet. Like, you know, they've got plans for it, but like next year sometime, 2021. <laughs> it's mm. all, everything's up in the air. So yeah, that brings us back over to why, why are we actually going to talk about real pinball? We never talk about real pinball. <laughs> or at least we rarely talk about real pinball. But my really? Lord, when I saw that Guns N' Roses tables, my jaw hit the floor. Yep. I it mean, it was incredible. It's, yeah. It is unbelievable. So there's a couple of interesting things that are going on here too with it. So Jersey Jack, uh, not only do they have that insanely expensive collector's edition, which you can't buy because if you didn't buy it already, you can't buy it now. Uh, But they also wound up making their least expensive version ever, which is coming in just under seven grand. Um, It has a lot missing from it. (laughs) Mm. There's no doubt about it. Which is not normal. Not normal with um, Jersey Jack, because normally the the differences in, in a lot of cases between the like the what they refer to uh, as as like a, a pro model, um, it, it, there's usually not a lot of stuff missing. It's normally just little extras and and bling basically. But you're cabinet. missing, and and we'll kind of highlight some of this. Uh, but things you're missing, you're missing the two different guitar headstocks. You're diff- missing on the pop bumpers. The the pop bumpers are essentially the drum kit, and they've got cymbals and stuff on them. Those are gone. Um, you're missing a lot of the lighting. <laughs> mm. um, and but they are what they are saying is that it still it plays really nice and fast. So that's a uh, that's a good thing there. But you know that's a big price difference between eleven eleven five and seven nine or whatever it was. Like, that's a lot of change that you could probably you could probably go the pro model and then go and buy a second hand pinball and get two, you know, pinballs, right. pretty decent ones for that price. Right. So yeah. So it is interesting. Uh, the thing that stood out the most to me was, yeah, this thing will never be coming to digital. Uh, not only because of the sheer processing power I think it would take with the insane amount of lights. Um, I think, I think just the, the, that regular base model has over 300 lights. The next one up has something like 450 and the uh, collector's edition has something like 650 lights on it. I mean, it's an insane (laughs) amount of lighting. I think they'd actually have a whole separate board or distributed boards just for the lights alone. Yeah. This model. And that's not it to mention the great. video package that they have accompanying this. Um, and then the sound package with full cut songs. So there's where you're starting to get into insane licensing territory is I think These are ha- masters. Yeah. These and, are and, cut from the master recordings. And I can't remember how many songs exactly it is. I want to say it's like 13 or 14. Um, so you've got that. But then... It's also featuring Gibson, Fender, Marshall. Uh, who's the drumstick? I don't. There's some major sponsors Sabian. on this thing. <laughs> yeah, well, Pearl. I think it's the other one. Yeah. So I mean, like it's just yeah. It's it's basically like roller ga- roller games on steroids as far as the licensing problems go. Oh my with god. Brands. I mean, can you um, imagine trying to hammer that deal out? Uh, you just Man. you couldn't have a Kickstarter beta. there's why the table cost 12500 for the uh, collector's edition um, absolutely that's because um, they're normally about 10 aren't they that's what like, I thought I previously about, yeah at 10 and a half so an extra 2 grand on top for the licensing and that's per unit um, so imagine how much this deal costs but the thing is that they don't have to worry about it because yeah. it's sold out so yeah. at least they they're not having to risk it there. And that just shows you how strong the industry is at the moment, eh? I also found it interesting that it's shipping in family mode, but 
they didn't edit any of the songs. So if you play in family mode, I think you only get seven songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. If you want, so, if, you, if you want the rest of the songs, you got to kick it into adult mode. <laughs> and there's going to be profanity. Oh yeah. Well, it was funny because the uh, I was watching this video um, that was a uh, an interview with the the designers of the table, and the guy was talking about how he had this. <sighs> I think it was like 700 lines of script that he needed one of the band members to to talk for call outs and they were doing the adult version and he was talking about how the guy was like hey I don't want to read these can you just you know give me a line reading and I'll say it back and he's like yeah sure and he starts getting to some of these call outs and he's like I don't want to read this out loud for the guy to say it back to me it was like one of them was like quit pulling your pud and do something else and I, it was just kind of funny <laughs> wow fair so, enough yeah it, it was, yeah it's it, gonna be an interesting one on location that one I mean it, it'll be okay in bars and stuff like that oh yeah but yeah you won't you won't see this one in a family entertainment center no, <laughs> no. anything other than family mode <laughs> <laughs> so the the part that blew me away though most was was the light show. So we're going to show you a little bit of this because um, it. Yeah. I mean, you, if you don't want to seek it out, we're going to do you the favor of uh, not making you seek it out. But it is rather incredible. So um, I've got a little video to play you. We're going to uh, have it muted at first because I don't want the video pulled. We don't because, want to get DMT eight. Yeah, because <laughs> you know it's got. Uh, it, it's Lost liver, music, right? liver Let Die from Guns N' Roses playing. Uh, so we can play a little bit of the music, and I'll play it where it kicks in for the light show. But I want you to pay attention to the uh, to just the beginning, because there's a lot of close-up shots of some of the features of the table. So with that being said, I'm going to kick it over to here. Not those. We don't want that anymore. What we want to see is this. Hey, look at that. All right, I'm going to get my cursor there. Here we go. So you can see the drumsticks there, little axle. Look at that headstock right there with it. Uh, that's the bass. So four strings going on there. Again, the drumsticks. You'll see the little, uh, the check out. Okay, that's the DMD board. But then there's the concert area that you can see with the moving light. Look at that. Uh, that it's like insane. it's insane, right? So let me put on yeah. a little music so you can hear what's going on. I mean, look at that! It is it's nuts. nuts. Look at that. Yeah. It's like it's like can you imagine playing that? In... Look at this! Like it's just fantastic. <laughs> I know with the with the lights going up, the I forget what they call the it's hot lights or something like that. Um, Incredible! Can you right. imagine playing that in a dark room? Oh, it would be so good with the sound up, or in the case of Josie Jack, with your headphones plugged in. Well, no, but here's the other thing. That. Again, I think this is with the collector's edition only. They put an amplified speaker in the topper. It is an insane sound system that is on this thing. Uh, I I mean I think it it's it's something that is if you turned it up properly in an arcade you that's all you would hear you wouldn't hear anything you would else just in hear the entire symbol. arcade yeah yeah it is just I mean the 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 sound package on Jersey Jacks in general are actually pretty good that they've got like mid range tweeters and a woofer in the cabinet like that no other pinball game has that on the market. But coupled with like a decent, like almost studio quality speaker setup in it, this thing would absolutely pump. And I think one of the things you can do if you have it at home is you can put it onto jukebox mode and it'll just play the songs that are in there, like a like a big glorified iPod, basically. Yeah. You know, so it, it's going to be amazing to play. I, I hope someone gets it down here in Australia. Like it'll be the limited edition one, or sorry, the. I think it's what the the regular limited and then CE. I think we might be lucky enough to see a um, a limited down here somewhere, hopefully, because I would love to get my hands on it. It, it was interesting that, that what they were trying to go for was capturing the concert experience. 
Um, yeah. That's what they wanted it to be. And the the designer was saying that he purposely did not look at, touch, or play the Data East version of the game because he didn't want to be influenced by it at all, didn't want yeah. to... Uh, uh, well, but yeah, didn't take any design cues from it. Exactly, but what I find interesting is that you're still doing the same kind of thing. You're trying to collect all the band members. <laughs> um, well, it's a it's a music pin, isn't it? Like, it really? is. It is. But they said the, the the general idea is though you collect all the band members uh, in order to get to the concert, and then you play the concert. But they said no matter how poorly you're playing, you will be able to start a song. At some point in the uh, in your three balls, which right. I think is okay. pretty cool. So it, that is pretty good. Like there's a guarantee, almost like a, it's a pity song, right? You get to, <laughs> you play, like you know, when you get like the pity extra ball at the end of your third ball because you've done so badly. Um, and yeah. and the really insane thing is that yes, they have the nine minute version of November Rain in there, and you can play the entire song. And I guess what you're doing while you're playing any one given song, you're building up a jackpot. And that at any time you can cash out that jackpot uh, and then switch songs. So it's up to you to how long you want to play any one song also, from what I understand. Yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be an interesting one to play. Like just the mechanisms in it look great. Like, you know, the locking system and one of the, I think it's like the, the base head um, where the ball gets locked and, you know, you store the balls there and, See, I it, love it. Between it, this... It's funny, though, isn't it? Like, I was going to say, between this and uh, Stranger Things, man, these guys are really starting to push the really boundaries of what are capable outside. on a pinball machine. Yep. I, I was lucky enough to get to play Stranger Things a lot the other night. Um, it, the, the one with the Pico projector and, and, you know, the essentially stadium projection onto the play field. And... It doesn't get old. It it looks so good, and it makes the game so different to play. But you know, this light package, uh, I don't know. I think putting you know Stranger Things and this next to each other, have a guess which one's going to win out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be Stranger Things, unfortunately. As much as I love it, I just I just want to want to see this with Metallica right next to it, and. Uh, and ACDC, yeah, eh. it makes it makes ACDC <laughs> look like an EM. That's why I wouldn't even bother like, putting that one there, <laughs> which is fair to say because it was produced in 2010, so it may as well be an EM with the amount of um, um, innovations that have happened in pinball in the last 10 years. Like, it's not really a fair comparison, really. But well, because didn't did am I correct in that uh, Aerosmith and Kiss came after uh, Metallica? Aerosmith certainly did. Um, Metallica. No, Aerosmith. Didn't that come out after yeah. Metallica also? Yeah, it did. Because it and has yet, a um. And yet, I would still screen. put Metallica up against this. Oh, you know what? I have not seen in person, Iron Maiden. So maybe that would be the one to uh, put right next to it. It's not that great. No, really. No. Well, we got the pro version at um, Netherworld. It's nothing to write home about. Oh, that's a shame. Like, yeah, it's we've got an interesting playfield layout, but. Visually, it's not awesome. Okay, like, well, I I really dislike the game actually, so, <laughs> so it's it it's not one of my favorites to start with, um, but it's not super interesting. Well, I keep on wondering when we're going to see any of these because uh, right now it's not exactly Nothing. like you can just travel out there and go play pinball. At least where I'm at, Jared might be able to, but I I can't. Yeah, we're lucky enough to be able to down here. Um, we've just recently got the nod that we can actually stand up, drink beer at pubs, and they therefore play pinball machines in pubs. Um, so yeah, we're we're very fortunate here to be able to do that. So there you go, folks. Uh, lots of new info, lots of things to uh, to think about, talk about, discuss. Uh, what has got you? most excited though i mean are you more excited for uh, you know some of these real pinballs that have come out are you excited at all for any of these cabinets are you strictly just like screw it all i only want the digital downloads of what zen and zachariah zachariah are offering um 
What is it? Tell us. We're curious because yeah. we got another show to do in two weeks and we're going to want to know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because, you know, by that time, you know, we you know, the six will be out. So not much to talk about there. And then, you know, probably still in limbo about all the pinball cabinets. So, you know, what are we going to do? I have to talk about movies. Hey, well, you, <laughs> I'm always down for that. You know that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hey, folks, uh, we appreciate you uh, sticking around through uh, through this longer than usual gap that we had uh, with the podcast. Um, we're going to try and mix some things up a little bit. You might notice that happening soon. Uh, we just we we, we uh, you know how we get we get bored with what we're doing and decide that we need to tweak. <laughs> try something new. Yeah. So be on the lookout. Uh, for that, I think you'll you'll notice it happening. It'll be happening on YouTube is uh, basically where it'll happen. It just depends on me and my time. Yes. But until then, until next time we talk, like I said, probably be about two weeks from now. We usually don't know what we're going to talk about other than Jared's favorite things. Stuff and things. That's it, folks. Bye-bye. Subscribe. Later. See ya.